the vision, the, the vision where, no, where it's idea. on the road no, to Damascus, idea. Paul himself did not say he saw Jesus. It was, it was in a book which came after him. Do you get it? The book of Acts was not authored by Paul. He authored Galatians, Corinthians, that half of the Old Testament, uh, sorry, the New Testament was authored by Paul. Right? About 50%. I have, it, what? So you, you're saying that Luke wasn't there? On the, road to, on the road to Damascus. But when, when, it, when it comes to that division that he saw... Yeah, but if he wasn't there and he's offering a the story, therefore it's been recited. You know, if you, if you see, like, when it comes to, like, his vision, it said that it was heard and it said it wasn't heard, like, by others. Oh, it's hard to ask you. No! How, do you know, how would Jesus... How would, if, if Paul did indeed see a vision, how do you know that that's not the devil inspiring him? He claimed to have seen Jesus in a vision, right? How do you know that's not a devil? Well, this is the thing. Paul was authenticated by the apostles as well. Who was Paul was pulled upon, like for, for his. You see, I can't remember if it's uh, Peter, two, perhaps two of the actual contemporaries of Jesus pulled him up for what he was preaching. But did they end up agreeing with him? They ended up agreeing with him in the end, didn't they? So agreeing with his message. So yeah, but that's the whole point. Paul was validated by the apostles. So therefore, let's just say he could have been mistaken, but we know if he's also interacting with the apostles, who are also aware, and he's endorsed by them, his, then his, we his, have no contention. This, this message that he's preaching after the departure of Jesus, right? Yeah. Why was it never preached by Jesus? Why was it never preached by, for example, like when, when um, Peter stood up in Acts, he says, here, Israel, he says, Jesus Christ or Jesus from Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by wonders, miracles and signs, which, which God did through him, as you yourselves know. You see it? He had, that's an opportunity for him, to, for him to say Jesus of Christ, Jesus of Nazareth was a man that came to be sacrificed for the sake of mankind. He had an opportunity to, he, he the, the people, the Lord. Pe no, Peter, when he's standing, he's, he's gathered, the people are obviously listening to him. That's an opportunity for him to say the, the doctrine of the Trinity, isn't it? If he truly believed well, it. Well, that's like an argument from silence, just because he did it or he could have done something. I don't think that's very, uh, a, a very, a why choose then or why choose later? Why didn't he I mean, say that? If you, if you look at the whole, like you look at the ministry of Christ as well. Yeah. When you look at... Um, but this is the thing, what, if Christ had apostles and Christ's apostles also validated Paul, therefore they didn't see an issue with his message and believe that. Validated him in what way? When you say validated him, what did they? Uh, yeah, because they, because they accepted Paul and the, and the things that he said. Like for example, the Council of Jerusalem. Um, well, I don't know about. So yes. the, the, the whole point, paper boy, was the main point. What I was getting at is this, which I, I can't get my head around. Yeah. The people, Muslims, base their the Quran off of. The fact that Muhammad has to have been talking to Jibril, that angel, Jibril yeah. and that was an angel from God. So yeah. my whole point of him going over Second Corinthians was to say that a pretext is that no, he, he can come as an angel of light. So, so this would be the point. Did, did Jibril ever introduce himself as that's I am Jibril? That's a, that's a good we point. see in the biblical story, for example, he says to Mary, "I am Gabriel." Yeah, I mean, if you look through the hadith literature, yeah, perhaps there's something there. Well, apparently, I've not gone through, I've not gone through every hadith to tell you well, that. Well, apparently, it was. I know, um, I know there's, I know, I know, yeah, I know there's, there's, there's a hadith of Jibril where he came to the masjid and uh, he taught that he, he asked the Prophet Muhammad certain questions, and then the. But you'd have to establish that was Jibril. Okay. So after that, he said that he said, basically, do you know who that was? It was a man that approached. He said it was Gabriel. He came to teach you your religion. That? The Prophet Muhammad to the companions. Yeah, but my question was, did Gabriel introduce himself as Gabriel? Perhaps in hadith. I can't Sorry. say. I can't, I can't say from from hadith literature. Probably, probably there is. Perhaps there is. Perhaps. And well, I mean, he was introduced through Warwick, as right. I believe it, as I know. Do because you know because this is the thing, and expanding on his his point, it will be like you have the hadith where he goes to speak to Warwick bin Nofal. And he tells him this is Gabriel. But even if if I said to this person, "Oh, I saw Angel Gabriel," he and he liked Angel Gabriel, he would come with me. Oh, let me see for myself. 
So it would seem odd that a Christian who knows who Gabriel is the most reputable angel, that apparently someone said, and you don't don't go to ver even go even to verify it yourself, and you don't even also have this angel supposedly introducing himself. You're saying that for him to verify that it was Gabriel, he had to introduce him to Waraka. No, I'm saying, wouldn't you, if, if I if, if I go to any Christian, I, Angel Gabriel's right there, they would want to see it for themselves, because not even just to verify, but just to be like, wow, Angel Gabriel. But in, in, but in, but in, in when it comes to like... How can be that? When it, when it comes to like... Um, in, 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 in the Bible, for example, like when it comes yeah. to Jesus. But let me just oh. add on him before I'll let you answer. Because his argument is, 700 years before Muhammad came, you have a community that understand the concept that Satan can come as an angel of light. For example, you have Mormonism, um, Adam Smith. Who Joseph, sorry, Joseph. Joseph Smith, who claims he saw an angel. Now, let me just... just I'm not, I'm going to come back literally in a second, I've got to run in here, I'm just going to put, pause it. He's going to do my next one, I'm just going to go that side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm back, I'm back. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, thanks for your interest. Sorry, let me just, uh, I can't even remember what, what point it was. But, essentially, yeah, he read, I think, 2 Corinthians, where it says that uh, Satan can appear as an angel of light. So you have a, a community 700 years before Muhammad that understood that jinns or Satan can come as an angel to deceive people. To validate that point, I gave the example of Mormonism where you had Joseph Smith, who also claims that he saw an angel. Your argument would be he must have seen something else. And then we can say the same regarding the Bible as well. Yeah, but that's, cool. well, that's, that's, so that's why he's asking you. And that's why we're asking the conversation in terms of how did we establish, for example, that Muhammad met Gabriel. So, for example, in, in Luke it says, when um, Zachariah said, spoke to the angel, and it says, the angel answered him and said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I was sent to you, speak to you. Also have the hadith, um, you can see it for yourself, where the angel comes to Muhammad. Um, this is the hadith, this is Al-Bukhari. So then he began to like, Seclusion. He used to go to the seclusion in the clay, cave of Hera, where he used to worship Allah continuously for many nights before going back to his family to take the necessary provision of food for the stay. He came back to his wife Khadija again to take the provision of food likewise till one day he received guidance whilst he was in the cave of Hera. An angel came to him and asked him to read. Allah's apostle replied, I do not know how to read. The prophet added, then the angel held me forcibly and pressed me so hard that I felt distressed. Then he released me and again asked me to read and I replied, I do not how, know how to read. Thereupon he held me until again and pressed me for the second time until I felt distressed. He then released me and asked me to read, but again I replied, I do not know how to read. Thereupon he held me for the third time and pressed me until I got distressed. And then he released me and said, read in the name of your Lord who has created all that exists has created man out of a clock. Read and your Lord is the most generous. Who has taught the writing by which pen has taught man that which we, that he knew not? Uh, then it says, then Allah's apostle returned with the experience and the muscles between his neck and shoulders were trembling till he came upon Khadija and said, cover me. They covered him and when the state of fear was over, he said to Khadija, O oh Khadija, what is wrong with me? I was afraid that something bad might happen to me. Then he told her the story. Khadija said, nay, but receive the good tidings. By Allah, we'll ask, never disgrace you. For by Allah, you will keep good relations with your kith and kin. Speak the truth and help the poor and the destitute. Entertain your guests generously and assist those who are stricken with calamities. Khadija took him to Warika bin Nafal, the son of Khadija's paternal uncle. Warika had been converted to Christianity in the pre-Islamic period and used to write Arabic and write of the gospel in Arabic as much as Allah wished him to write. He was, set, he was an old man and had lost his eyesight. Khadija said to Warika, O oh my cousin, listen to what your nephew is going to say. 
Well, Rika, my nephew, oh, my nephew, where, what have you seen? The prophet then described whatever he had seen. Well, Rika said, this is the same angel who was sent to Moses. I wish I were young. He added some other statement. Allah's apostle asked, will these people drive me out? Warika said, yes, for nobody brought the like of what you have brought, but was treated with hostility. If I were to remain alive till your day, then I would support you strongly. But a short while later, Warika died and the divine inspiration was paused. So here we clearly see that he's experienced something. He's take, told Khadija and Khadija's then taken him to Warika, who's then affirmed it's an angel, Gabriel. So the first question would be, if he was a Christian, he would have been aware of that text where it says the angel can come as the angel of light. So we would have to question what was his criteria to define that was actually a biblical um, angel. Because, for example, as I showed you in the Bible, where Gabriel turned, came up to Zachariah, he said I, he introduced himself. So we would have to establish what, how did he know this was a actual angel or not based on the biblical text. You are obviously, you as Christians, you believe that your Bible is what everything should be judged like, the authenticity of the Quran should be basically determined based upon biblical principles, right? Okay. But we as Christians may say, well, we, we disagree because right. we don't I think what the problem is, if Warwick was a Christian, he would have been done by our text, Christian text. Yes, essentially, so because as a, it points out he was a Christian, so he would have had a criteria. Because what you said, a Mormon can say, therefore that validates Joseph Smith saw a real angel. But then it becomes a bit circular because then you would have to have I mean, some to sort of like, when criteria. It comes, when it comes to Arata, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, I've, I've not looked into this, into him to be like what yeah. he was, what sort of Christian he was, what he was referring to, yeah. like, what, what, you know, what he had with him mm -hmm. to see it. Um, because essentially the context would then come down to this point. We, if we take the principle of jinns can come as an angel of light, even if you go against the biblical text, we know we have Joseph Smith and other people who've claimed they've seen angels and received divine inspiration. So therefore, we'd have to say, how then, do we but know? Then, but then we have to put the thing under our lens, don't we? Each yes. Each scripture under our lens. Mm -hmm. like, like, like someone can come along and say I'm an inspired man, like for example the, the authors of the Bible, yeah. they can say I'm inspired by God, what I have is from God, mm. but then you have to put the book under a lens, the Quran under a lens, the yeah. Bible under a lens, whatever it is that comes, you've got yeah. Sikhs, Hindus, whatever, yeah. you see it, like anyone can come forward and make the claim. So true. then what would the lens we would have to put Muhammad yeah. under to, yeah. to validate yeah. that I mean, criteria? We're talking about the, the, talking about the, Quran, the, the Quran, the authenticity of the Quran. Okay. What, what, what would we discuss in the authenticity of his prophet? Well, but that's the thing. You said we would have to then authenticate the text or what you have a... Basically, you said we have to have a criteria. So well, I'm saying then... But what, what is the criteria, to, the criteria for authenticity or for someone being authentic? Well, that's what because, I'm asking I mean, you. Like, well, we, can, we can say the same thing with, with, with like the, the, the Bible as well, isn't it? Well, that's like, what I'm asking you because that's your point. Yeah, but you're, you, you guys are essentially discrediting yeah, so I'm the asking you. And the, and the Quran, isn't it? So right. What, what is authentic? What, what should be? How is someone a truthful? Well, how that's what some truthful. Prophet? Well, that's why I'm throwing back to you in your own way. Whatever you think would be a way to indicate that this person was genuine. Because we would say, for example, we use to lie the text. I mean, when it comes to like proving what he come with being authentic. Mm. Um, well, I mean, prophecy. Prophecy is like somebody comes with prophecy and the prophecy is fulfilled. Okay. That's... Um, so what about people like Nostradamus? Nostradamus got things right, got things wrong. So wouldn't you say that's a prophecy? No, I mean, prophesying... So if somebody prophesies and then all of their prophecies are fulfilled. So you would say that all the prophecies had to be fulfilled? If the prophecies are fulfilled, it proves that it's, you know, obviously God has, we don't have knowledge of some of the beings that we've seen. God has knowledge of the past, the past you know, has knowledge of the past, the present, and the future. So if somebody is, is, is uh, giving prophecies which are fulfilled and there's, uh, none of them are incorrect, 
unlike Nostradamus, as you mentioned, I mean, he prophesied, he got things right, he got things wrong. You see, you see. But then, didn't your prophet also uh, mention about the last hour will not come until this? Well, uh, I think there was a young boy. There's a hadith. I don't have it on me, but there's that hadith where he said the hour will come before this person, this young boy, is like an adult or something like that. You don't. No, uh, I don't have it on me, but I'll, if I if I see you next next what, time. What, 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 what about the prophecy anyway? Well, but the the last hour hasn't come and the boy is long dead. So therefore, if the prophecy was that last hour will come before this child sees adulthood, it would have been a false prophet. Uh, let me. Can we go on the? Like, can I just I'm interested to in the Bible because I was I'm, I'm reading a book recently called, and it's a collection on, on, on the signs of the hour. Okay. And nowhere is it mentioned in there that, 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 that one of the times there's a guy raising a child raising apart from the job. Yeah, I have a, have a look. Yeah, go on. Yeah, and, right. Sorry, sorry. Go on, go on. Um, so we we're going on the uh, print, like. You're going on the pretense that this Warwick of mine was a Christian, right? Is that what you're saying? No, I, thought, I, thought, I asked him, because I, I came late to the conversation. Yeah. There's, a lady, there's, a, there's a Christian lady who saw the prophecy of the sword, the cloud that full of the prophet. No, a, a, lady, a lady, a Christian lady, she was a Christian lady. A lady, so she, 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 she wasn't uh, an, an evangelical or any of them. I'm just saying, 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 so when you're talking about a cloud that follows us, yeah. like, Satan can do loads of tricks. No, we know. I mean, that's just silly. We know. That's silly. But, but he doesn't do tricks with goodness, does he? Oh? Satan's not going to teach you to do goodness. I'm going to tell you one thing. Satan's to deceive you. We know that. Right. Satan's going to deceive you as well. He's going to deceive you as well. That's what I was going to say. Right, so... At that time, you're saying that Gal um, <laughs> Warwick was a Christian, that's what you're saying. I'm asking, I'm asking, was that the lady who was a Christian? I don't know who it is. I don't know who it is. If it is the Hadith, which it's not, I don't then know. It's, a separate, it's a separate conversation and okay. it's irrelevant. But I don't know. I don't know. Right, so, so, I so I, no, I'm just going to stick... What about me's paper, by the way, as well? No, I'm going to stick to where, where me and uh, your brother was, yeah? So, the point I was getting is, if Warwick was a Christian, he would have known about the text before. Yeah, in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8, he would have known it, where it says, But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be a you know what you're saying in Corinthians? Now this is, I'm talking about in Galatians. Sorry, Galatians. Is that, that was what you were reading before, right? No, no, this is, this is Galatians. This what, is what's, what's the one you asked me the about? The one before was uh, Corinthians. Corinthians, yeah. Corinthians, about, about angel, was it devil in light or uh, coming as angel of light. Angel of light. I mean, what, don't you think Warwick, if he was a Christian, would have said, no, I, actually, this, this could be a devil that's come to you. Oh, yeah, this could be a devil. I, I personally, right, that's, 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 that's a good this, point. I don't believe that Warwick knew scripture. Well, because if he was a lot better than you, can we just can we just her tongue would have been closest to the can I just let me say what I'm gonna say? Right, so right, right, yeah, you can let me go. Right, so if say for instance back in that day, I've got the scripture, yeah, and this and the revelations are gonna come for an angel, yeah, that's gonna give me another scripture. Well I've got this scripture there that I believe is a Christian. And another gospel comes to me for another. Listen, you ask a question. Yeah, no. And another gospel comes through, through another angel, as you call him. Yeah. I angel. know that that's not the angel of God, because it's because I'm I'm going by the scripture. I know he's ready for it. I know he's going to come out with it. Because because I, I have to go by it. as a Christian, I will be going by the scripture that I believe. Right, which says in Galatians chapter one, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one to you, uh, sorry, contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. In other words, any angel that comes with another go gospel, which you, could, the Quran is, let's face it, it's not, is 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 not the gospel. It's another. Is what does gospel mean? Uh, sorry, but it's another. Um, it's contrary to the Bible. What does gospel mean? The gospel means good news. Sorry. Right, the good news of what? Huh? The good news of Listen what? Listen to what I'm saying. Answer it, please. Because it's kind of relevant. Because we've, yeah, you, go on, go on now. Say that again. The good news. The good news of what? Was it the good news of the gospel? 
Well, is it good news to you? Is it a good you news to you? So if you don't know, say I don't know. So I, I don't understand the question. Sorry. Repeat the question. Can you yeah. explain it? To you? Yeah. What is he saying? I don't understand. Sorry. It's asking the meaning of gospel. He means good news. I've told you once. Like the good news of what? Though? What, the Bible? The Bible? The good news obviously meant something, didn't it? it was oh, called, right. it was oh called, sorry, sorry. It was called the good news for a reason. Okay, yes. Yeah. So what sorry. good news now, was there now to bring? Let me go back to the text, sorry. Sorry, I, now I see what you mean. Because if, if you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. We, we don't think that the Gospel the gospel and the Bible are two completely different books. Would you agree on that or not? 100%. And that's good. Well, no, no, no. he said the Gospel... No, oh, sorry. Sorry, I thought he said the Quran. Sorry, sorry, oh, my mistake. Okay. Sorry, the Gospel and the Bible. Say it again. The Gospel is... It says that Allah sent sorry, the Torah, sorry, sorry. the Injil, yeah. and the Quran. Yeah? The Injil yeah. and the Quran. Right, the Torah and the, the Injil and the Gospel in Arabic. Okay? That means yes. good news in Arabic. Good news of Jesus Christ, that God has come in the flesh to forgive us for our salvation and nothing. Well, let's go back to... That what it was, wasn't it? That's what, that's what he was talking about, um, this one there. Is that what he was referring to? even if we or an angel from heaven right? should preach to you and this gospel contrary, yeah. which is the Quran. Because the, the Quran is contrary. Even if it's three passages. Do you understand me? It's a different belief system. That's what, that's what I was getting at. I didn't know. Uh, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. But, but just to go back to the point, because it's like, yeah, even, yeah, if, even, even, yeah. even when you look at the Hadith, start from the standpoint of the Hadith, you'd, there would be two things which I pointed out. One is that if he was a Christian, like, and someone said, oh, Angel Gabriel is visiting you, you would want to see that angel for yourself. That's just anyone's natural inclination. Like, if if he said to you, Angel Gabriel was here, Wait. For example, the Prophet Muhammad, like they've, the angel of revelation goes to the prophets. You understand? They will go to the Prophet Muhammad. It's not, it's not for everybody to. It doesn't. Well, but you feel that the will of, uh, you know, me or you, like for example, saying, "Well, I want to see Angel Gabriel. It should come before me." You know, it's not. No, but you would probably not, go to the we, cave. We, we could want that, but it doesn't mean we're going to get it. Yeah, know? but you might go and explore the cave and see if it comes again, or or whatever, just to be like, "Wow, this is an angel," because you're the one who's. You know, I mean, if, if he's coming with certain, for example, like with the Quran or he feels yeah. that that's sufficient evidence or whatever it is, yeah. that the angels come to him, like, like as he's as he read in the Hadith, that he he basically felt that that was Angel Gabriel, Waraka, right? So what he's heard from the Prophet Muhammad and Khadija, for him is sufficient for yeah. him to believe that it was the angel. Yeah. But, then, but then for you, but if you were there, maybe you'd want to see that. Yeah. Everyone has their own criteria. Yeah. But, but then again, going, if we start using scripture as a starting point we would argue that there has to be some sort of way to what convinced him that that was angel gabriel because there's no christian stories out there where an angel squeezed someone and that so we say well gabriel introduces himself then he said i'm gabriel at least that's some sort of validation but in terms of that experience and he said it visited Moses, but in the scripture doesn't say um, Gabriel visited Moses. But it'll be like, then how, what was the criteria that he used from that story? Well, that's what I'm saying, because it's a story that no, there doesn't seem to be any, or correlate to any Christian tradition of anyone being squeezed then, and told to read. Why, why does it have to be based on Christian tradition? Because he was a Christian, and that's where it's supposed to... Well, but he's, as a Christian, you're, you're saying that, but he's a, he's a Christian that's... Would have got his faith from somewhere. No, but he's, you're saying that he's a Christian that's affirmed, he's saying it's, it's uh, uh, Angel Gabriel, right? Yeah. So you're accepting that, that he said that? Well, I'm just saying, if he said it, right. as a Christian, there would have to be some sort of Christian tradition. Okay. Like, I couldn't just make invent a Islamic tradition. You'll say, well, did the ulama or the Sahaba speak about this thing as well? So, because we have 700 years of Christianity before, so it would be then what... There would have been at least some evidence that someone could have had this sort of criteria to say, oh, it correlates to... Well, well maybe. I mean, it's, it doesn't necessarily have to voice all of the things which have convinced him. It's, you know what I mean? Like, there may be some things which he's considered, but he's not said it to 
Khadija, oh, I think it's the angel for this reason, or that reason, or this reason, or that reason. He's just voiced that he believes it's the angel, right? Well, and this, this would go to the, to the point of the scripture, because there has to be a criteria for prophethood that has to be consistent. But, yeah, but I'm, but, I'm, yeah, well, but you can yeah, respond. Sure, sure, sure. Because then if that criteria becomes uh, corrupted, then there is no basis that anyone can judge a true or false prophet. So therefore, it, uh, it's actually under, if you think about it logically, that would have to be under God's jurisdiction to preserve the criteria for people to be able to identify a true or false prophet. Because once that disappears, anyone can then be a prophet. Because if I jump to Joseph Smith, you would use your Quran as a criteria to say, well, the Quran says X, Y, and Z. But if the scripture is corrupted before the Quran comes, then what is the criteria? Like, like, like I was saying, yeah. he he doesn't necessarily like. For example, now, like we may see somebody and, and he could be a psychologist, and you, you 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 look at a certain individual and you see that he's not he's, he's unhinged, right? And you say to us, be careful. That guy, he's, he's you know avoided him because there's you know I, I've observed him to be a bit unstable, yeah. right? And due to what you've studied, there's obviously certain criteria certain criteria or whatever it is that you've um, considered which have made you arrive to that conclusion that the guy is someone to avoid but you've not gone down the list you've not gone down the list said to us this for this reason and that 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 that, that, that that's why I say I said he was unhinged you get it so what I'm saying is that when it comes to that waraka like there's perhaps a list of reasons as to why he believed that the angel was Gabriel but he didn't express them right so but this is the thing so now but this is the thing. This, so is now, it clear what I'm saying, brother? Yeah, Does that but, make this, sense? but this is now where we can we compare your line, point. Oh, we, we can compare your point to the point of Paul. Well, I said that apostles validated uh, Paul, who were the apostles of Christ. Now, I've asked for your validation because we even questioned Warika. So you're saying it could be, but then if you're basing your faith on the opinion of one person who's validated an not, angel. But the faith, our faith is not based on that testimony of Warakha. Well, but then... The, the, you look at the... We, we look to the Quran, we look at the life of the Prophet okay. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But, but, he, but let's say... But the thing, because the Quran the says no one can create a verse like this, whatever. The, let's say, just call it... Let's just call it a linguistic miracle. What is to say that a jinn could not do that itself without our knowledge? There's, there's no recorded instances of, of, of the Arabs coming forward after that challenge at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu and saying, hold up, here we go, here's a surah. Yeah. Like, this is, that's like unto what you've right. produced. Your argument is fallen flat on its face. Yeah. But then the, that would have to be... I want to come in it's, it's very relevant, all up. It's very relevant. I just thought about it. Right? You know, one of the signs of the hour, bro. Yeah. I'll come back, let me come back. Let me come back. Okay. I'm going to give you a quote in Arabic and English. But, but, no, in English. Um, what was it? You, very repeat what you said. I'm saying that. Like, I've got a lot on my mind, but you mentioned about the Sorry, preservation. Sorry, I could see you was a preservation, yeah. right? Yeah. Even when you was so, asking that question, like, I was like, um, you, that you weren't time, making that much sense. Like, recited, like, yeah. To yeah. what the scripture no, was, I couldn't work out no what it was on about. No, 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 no. Like, you had yeah. the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sorry, man. I'm going to just bring it. People trying to shut him down, shut his lamp down. Yeah. But there are these people at that time were right. of the most eloquent speakers in the Arabic language. Yeah. But you don't see them coming from saying, look, we're going to do something which might. And this is, like, this is one, one man has come in reciting these verses yeah. to the people. And they have all the, the collective of the Quraysh and all the, the tribes are Arab, Arab right. say hearing this. Yeah. So how is it that their, 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 their collective efforts? They well, couldn't, they, they, well, they didn't, I'll say collective efforts, maybe they. they the, only, the only person. Closely do something similar, and that only him who's given the power to do that yeah. is the Dajjal. The right. Dajjal, one of the sons of the Dajjal, he will come to an Arab, a Bedouin Arab, and he will say, If I can resurrect your parents yeah. and bring them in front of you, right. will you accept me as Lord, as your Lord? Right. And some, some, most Arabs who will, will accept him as the Lord. Okay. Yeah. So that's quite deceptive, isn't it? Yeah. Right. As the rest of the Quran, does that make sense? So, so were the acts because the, the challenge he said so the, the, the argument was the Quran is a li the linguistics was era people couldn't meet the challenge so the Quran says bring a chat an ayah a single ayah like this so I'm saying in the verse where Solomon is I think here overhears the and speaking that is within an ayah 
So therefore, what, how then you should be able? How then do you distinguish what they are saying between that and the rest of the Quran? Because in terms of eloquence, because the Quran the challenge of reproduce something like this has to have some sort of tangible. You're saying because the answer quoted in the Quran, mm. that their speech, they got speech which matches the eloquence of because it's inserted into it. Yes. I mean, it's just like, for example, like you have the Bible. The Bible came out hundreds of years before the Bible. Yeah, so. Just because something, like, for example, you've got Moses being quoted in the Quran, mm. Isa, and vice versa. Yeah. Other people, Jesus, Moses, mm. um, whoever it is, is quoted in the Quran, Mary as well. Yeah. Um, their, because their speech is inserted in the Quran. Mm. I mean, that's. Because that's that's what essentially my point is. Because if let's say you didn't know who the speaker was, but I recited that verse to someone, and they can say, "Wow, that is very eloquent." So therefore, by default, that speech in the Quran is then on par with. You wouldn't say actually that's from a human, and then this ayah is from Allah. Say so for example, now you've, yes. got, you've got Allah speaking. Yeah. Right? Allah is saying whatever Allah may say, mm. and then he quotes somebody else. Mm. Right, so his the, 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 the um, words of somebody else are inserted. Mm. It doesn't it doesn't mean that that person's eloquence matches Allah's because their speech has been inserted in between what Allah has said. Mm. Do you see it? Like Allah is saying, and then there's a verse that perhaps rhymes with what Allah said from what Mary said. Yeah. And then Allah continues to speak after that. So right. It doesn't mean that elo elo Mary's matches the eloquence of Allah because Allah has quoted her and it like, rhymes or is in sync with what he said. It doesn't mean she's as eloquent as God. Did you get it? But then that would, I, I guess, essentially come to the whole point of the ch bring a verse or surah like this. Because then, what is the actual criteria that the person? Because you said none of the Arabs could meet that challenge. So then, what? So, for example, you've discounted that and said, well, their eloquence wouldn't be the same. So then, what would be the kind of checkbook of actual criteria? But then, I can't do the list. Of my head. But, but then, that may be one of the reasons why no one attempted to do it because there wasn't a set criteria. Because that, in of itself, unless we know what the criteria exactly is, we can't say, well, because they didn't meet the challenge they weren't able to do it unless we know what the criteria is that can be a discussion for another time that's yeah. something I've, I've deemed yeah no that's fine but that is, that's, that's essentially where my my argument was going but we've I kind of I can't, I can't debate something I'm not, I'm not no that's fine no that's fine I mean we can, it, can maybe go away and look into it and yeah no that's fine it's a, it's a bit of a tangent of what I was saying but it's essentially what the original point was just in terms of if, because you brought the question about Paul so obviously I said well he was validated by the apostles when you say validated this, this is actually I'm, I'm not this is not dispute this is genuine inquiry yeah where, whereabouts did they validate what did they say to provide the verse the, the book remember they said you've got a lot on your mind so, yeah, Stop it! Not now. I don't even know what you're talking about when you're talking about clouds. I've never even heard of a cloud. I just said to you that one of the prophecies of Muhammad didn't it, was that a cloud followed him and a Christian lady I don't know by the name of it. Right. So this is um. Everyone's speaking about the bush about the whole the whole um. So yeah, I've got the verse about Paul. It's in, in Galatians. So I just I'll just read it all in context. So it says, then. After 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem, this time with Barnabas. I took Titus along also. I went in response to a revelation, a meeting privately with the esteemed, those esteemed as leaders. I presented to them the gospel that I preach among the Gentiles. I wanted to be sure that I was not running and had not been running my race in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, was compelled to be circumcised, even though he was Greek. This matter arose because some false believers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Jesus Christ to make us slaves. We did not give in to them for a moment so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. For those who were held in high esteem, whatever they were, make no mistakes different to me. God does not show favoritism. They added nothing to my message. On the contrary, they recognized that I had been entrusted with the task of preaching the gospel to the un uncircumcised, just as Peter had been this had been to the circumcised. For God, who was at the work in Peter as an apostle to the circumcised, was also at work in me as an apostle 
to the Gentiles, James, Cephas, John, those esteemed as pillars, gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship when they recognized the grace given to me. Amen. So this is how we say, well, we'll validate where, where, where Paul. Was this, written? Uh, this is in Galatians. Galatians, but this is, this is Paul's writings, isn't it? Yep. Paul's writings, because he, he wrote letter, like Corinthians, Galatians, he wrote letters from his congregation. So of course he's going to, he, we can say he claims so what are you saying that he, he, claimed, he claimed approval. Are you saying that he's lying? It's, are you saying the Prophet Muhammad is lying? No, I've never said he's lying. I said he's been deceived by the devil. And I've never said he was lying. Yeah, but then but that I means... don't believe that, see, this is where Islam get us mistaken. We, the whole point, what I'm trying to say is this, that it was not the angel Gabriel. It was a it was a fallen angel. I don't believe that Muhammad just come out with some rubbish and, and just made up a liar like that. But in fact, I will go to far as to say I believe that he was an honest guy who the, the people around him would believe if Satan deceived him. And so he was deceived by a fallen angel. Hundred percent. Satan came in the form of Gabriel. Satan came in the form of Gabriel. Satan came in the form of the angel of light. Yeah, but wait, but so that's why I said come in the form but, of God. But that's why I said to you. And even and when I, but this is why can, I said to you, come as an angel of light. Yes, yes. Come because that's why. Come as an angel of light. Because I asked him the question. That's why I asked you the question. How do we know the angel was Gabriel? Because he said Satan wouldn't come as Gabriel. And I said, how do you know that was Gabriel? In the Bible, for example, it says Gabriel introduced himself as Gabriel. So all we know it's an angel, an angel, because the Bible says an angel can appear. Gabriel met him when he was a child. When, the, when, he, when it was the, the did he say I am Gabriel? The, he didn't say I am Gabriel, but there was an incident where he was opening his chest, he took a right. purifier to put it back in, and then even when obviously the cave situation where actually Gabriel came to him with the whole talk and the read read whatnot, even if the prophet didn't recognize that it was Gabriel, what if I, as we were speaking about earlier, told him the same angel that came to you. He, he didn't name Gabriel, so as we know, but right. now he doesn't know who it is. Right. He said the same angel that came to you is the same angel that came to Moses in the past. That's not my That's not full answer. I, I agree with you 100%. Right. No one, yes. Gabriel was an angel. For all we know, it could have been anyone. Exactly. 100%. But the fact that yeah. we know that um, the beast, I can't, I can't, I can't believe you are you mm -hmm. until you affirm well, about me to telling me. you. Yes, exactly. of course. We're on the same page, 100%. But it leads himself. I don't think he's got the power to imitate Gabriel because Allah not Gabriel is, because we don't know you haven't given okay, any criteria. Okay, he's that it was Gabriel. Okay, imitate angel. Let's say angels. Right. Okay, so, yeah, hundred. Okay, right. so now we go to the angel. All right. He brought him a Bible verse, which, which is uh, in Second Corinthians, and I'll read it again because you just right. came. Because it will be, sorry, it will be different to your okay, So the claim is that it wasn't Gabriel that came to Muhammad Salah, so the claim was, was the devil. That's what you guys are trying to say, right? Well, in terms of, we, we, we don't, we're trying to establish how do we know. Okay. So without, that's what we believe, but I'm not trying to make that assertion. We're just trying to go through the sort of what methodology. You believe, you're saying you believe it's a, a devil? It could be a jinn. We don't know. Mm. But, but I'm just saying, let's start off with actually just the criteria first. When, when you look at the, what the Quran is and the prophecies of the Prophet Sallallahu and the, the things that occurred in his life, no jinn, no, none of creation can orchestrate things like, for example, saying this will happen, like when the Romans were defeated. Yeah. And, and the Romans are defeated, and they can't, they can't deal with the future, they can't manipulate the future, future yeah. events. I'll just read them the verse and then I'll. So it just says, um, and this is uh, Corinthians. So it says, for such men and false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles, as apostles of Christ, and no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it's no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. So, so yeah, so nobody. So they hearken to his message only, and no one after him because he wants that. Well, but then that's why I appeal to Mormonism because he apparently saw an angel of, of light, a good angel that said good things. So I'm not even just using Christianity, or, but the testimony of other people who have claimed to receive right, just divine inspiration. Just say, okay, I, I see your point. But yeah, point. I'm discounting what you're saying and trying to yeah, yeah, jump yeah. in and, and just get my say. I, 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 I see your point, and it's an, and it's, and it's an, uh, fair point. It's a fair yeah. point. Yeah. Say 
well, what he's writing about, whoever comes after me is a false prophet. I can say, well, of course he'd say that. Of course he'd say that, because he wants people to, to believe he's the guy, and that what he's coming with is, is, is the truth, which needs to be followed, and what comes after it is, is a false prophet. Well, I'm more appealing to the fact that people believe that he didn't have to, he doesn't have to specifically say the angel, the devil could come as an angel of light. So it's then showing, highlighting people that because people will automatically presume that an angel itself must be good. But we're saying, well, actually, the devil can disguise himself. Because if we, again, appeal to Mormonism, let's just say we don't know what he saw. Maybe he saw a jinn, mm. but it appeared to him as an angel of goodness. But then we just say the same thing. Well, then that's why I said that at least the apostles validated it. Yeah. It's the purification stage I was talking to you about when the prophet was the heart was to come, he got purified for us. The prophet is not pure. If, if it was a jinn, the prophet would have been able to see for us, 100%. The fact that he's pure of all of this, he's not like any other human. So if it was an angel, whether he knew or not, if it was an angel, 100% it would have been something good to him. Why? Because Allah would only send good to our prophet. Okay. If it was a test of saying, he would, have, he would have either found out then or he would have eventually found out sometime in his life that, you know what, guys, 15 years ago this happened to me, don't take it as it was because Allah just told me that this was the devil. Okay, and just one point. Like, like, uh, one thing about Islam is it likes to clear everything, you know, it doesn't leave one, one stone unturned, 100%. So any problem that we have, we can always go back to the Quran and Sunnah for it. The same way for the Prophet, his whole life is clear to us. We got his whole biography from start to finish. So yeah, for, for the fallen angel thing, yeah, like Muslims are not with us. Yeah. So obviously you would understand the the, con the reflex of our argument to say, well, you know, obviously you'll give your own criteria, yeah, yeah. but that's what we'll come with. Mm -hmm. And just to well, find a point, because I've got both things, but for example, um, are you aware of the story of the, the Jewish woman who, cooked, who gave poison to the prophet? Yeah, sorry. The poisoned um, lamb to Muhammad? Yeah. So can you like tell, tell the story? If you don't remember, I can. Well, where, she, where the, the meat was poisoned and right. it was consumed. Right. Do you remember what she said to him? Uh, if you were a false prophet, so it would be uh, free of you or something along those lines. Yeah. So basically, if you're a false prophet, this meat would kill you. Mm -hmm. And if you are a true prophet, Allah would save you from the thing. And how did your prophet go? Sorry, show me the hadith in full. Okay. Again, I, I summarise it. Yeah, no, that's fine. Right. I can see if I can do it. Because no, I'm not trying to attract you and if you don't know how no, 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 no. Probably the best conversation I've had with today. I know, I know the, point, the point you're trying to make is, okay, if... If she's saying that I did this to see if you're not a false prophet, um, and then he ate it, and then as a result, his death came from that poisoning, mm. then that proves that he's a false prophet. That's what you're trying to say, basically. Well, my argument would be because when we still look at that criteria, someone couldn't accuse a prophet of being false and be successful. But the thing is, look, let's say she said that, yeah? Yes. Um, we're. I did this, so as to prove you're not a false prophet, for example, yeah? That, that's her woman's, that's the woman's criteria. Mm -hmm. That's not what, like the prophet said, said, didn't say, well, even from your own scripture, right? Yeah, but she was a Jew woman, so she had, had some, and remember this is from Islamic source, so at least if she was a Jewish woman, she would have had some understanding of what protections a prophet has. So it's not even a Christian party, it's like, uh, a Jewish woman who's saying has some sort of understanding of how prophets are pr protected for her to have the boldness to say that. We would assume she must have had the criteria to say that. I, you know, regarding the... I mean, if you pull the hadith up. Yeah, I'm just trying to find it. I thought I had it on my tablet, but... I regarding that being a meaning that somebody's... Uh, you know, a false prophet. Huh? I've never, I've never heard the prophet I said say like, if somebody, because prophets were killed before him. But never prophets, under like, the criteria example, like, of like John, for example. Yeah, but never under the criteria of if, if someone says like, if you're not a true prophet, I'm going to kill you. Like they, a challenge was laid out. Prophets can be killed, right. but not under a challenge. That then, if if it's validated, for example, like we will say the 
the Pharisees and who not challenge Christ to say, well, save yourself. The, 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 Jesus' vindication would be the resurrection, that actually he was saved. I mean, I mean, I know of no, nothing that's said that any prophet, because there's been prophets before the prophet has said that, even if he was there, have been killed, that have, have been, like, we don't say John was a false prophet because he was martyred. Or, or okay, so yeah, maybe. so this is the, so Musnad Ibn, Ibn Hanbal, so it says, uh, it was na narrated from Abbas that a Jewish woman gave the messenger of Allah some poisoned mutton. He sent the word to her asking, "What made you do? What do you? What made you do what you did?" She said, "I wanted to see if you were a prophet, that Allah would tell you about it. And if you were not a prophet, then I would have got rid the people of you." When the messenger of Allah felt the pain because of that, he would be treated with cupping. On one occasion he travelled and when he entered Iran he felt some pain because of that and was treated with cuppets. So then if we go on. Narrated Aisha, the prophet in his ailment in which he died, used to say, Oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Kaiba, and at this time I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison. And then one more. So this is from uh, the prophetic medicine Ibn Qayyim al Jaziyah. But, but we're not saying he, he died because of that. Well, that's my like, final can... part. And this is from there. So then they say here when the prophet used cupping, he did it in the upper part of the back, which was the most direct route to the heart. And so the poison was extracted with the blood in the case only partially. A part of the poison remained in the prophet system in order to fulfill what Allah had decided for his prophet so he would acquire every type of good and righteous reward there is. When Allah decided it was time for his prophet to die as a martyr, the effect of the poison reappeared so that the decision was fulfilled. Therefore, meaning the following ayah becomes apparent where Allah says, uh, have the rest of it. Regardless of that, like, okay, look. So, so let me just summarize and I'll let you respond. So my point is, I was trying to piece together different uh, Islamic sources, one that shows the reason why the woman did it, yeah. The other that showed that he used to get get, get cupping, and one that says where the cupping was for, for the remedy of the blood. So in a sense, essence, it's her. If he did die from the poison, her words did then come true. Uh, no, but that's her words. The point I'm saying is, we we from a yeah. point of view, we don't say that if somebody was killed by somebody, they're a false prophet because the words of a Jewish woman. Yeah. Because she came along and said that. Yeah. It's not mean. But that's that's correct. Just because of the words of this one, no. see, there's a false prophet. Oh, because she said that, and then he was affected by the poison. You see what? Do you see the point I make? Yeah, but then this is where it's, I feel, feel like the sort of shortfall of your argument is because if you have people from the book, if if it was such a thing where it refuted the religion, why would it be narrated? Don't you think it would be hidden? Well, if he died from the poison, you would have to narrate no, it and if, say no. But if it was a proof of his false false prophet, why would why would it be? something which is uh, in the literature which is obviously pro islam pro the prophet i sell it it's pro him being a prophet why would they put that in the literature if it was something which disproves his prophet well i would say that one if it's a historical uh, event that actually happened you would have to record it for example uh, have to record well, it. Look at, for example to umar's out. death was very brutal and he was killed with him like you can't make it up like if people know something you have to then state it you may be able to put a spin on like what i read that he said well allah allowed him to survive and then when everything was complete then he died but they still acknowledge he died from the poison but obviously that he's the people that are preserving the hadith these are people who want to preserve the religion. They want the religion to uh, survive. Yeah, you get it. They don't. They don't want um, doubts to be cast on the religion. They, they want it to succeed. So, if this what this woman saying that mm. was a clear cut evidence that he was not a prophet, yeah, it was something that, like, if you, for example, were, were well, I mean. Yeah, that's that's the point I'm making. I guess. That's, that's Do you have any? Oh, let me just. I want to listen for now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the point I'm making. Anyway, why? Why would it be if it was evidence for Islam that it, the prophet being? Why, why, why was it? Why was it put in there? Do you see it? They don't have to put it in there. It's yeah, but then, yeah, but then the thing is, again, like I say, but he's given specific happenings and even specific specific details too. On the fall of Constantinople, Constantinople 
he said the Muslims will take over it. Um, he specifically said it won't be Muslims of the Arabs. And that's when the Ottomans came by. They're, in Arab Muslims, they're Turkish Muslims. And they've taken over Constantinople. That was way after his death. And then there's multiple prophecies from that have happened and even to things that will happen. For example, in the future that even me and him know of right now, um, the, a river clearing up and, and under the river a mountain of gold will reveal and a lot of people were over it and he even gave with these um, prophesies he gave numbers to he's saying for every a thousand people that in joining this war 999 will die and he specifically said to the Muslims do not partake in this and when these things things of the past will happen and when these things do happen it just it proves that he's a prophet even more because it adds to his um, as to his resume, I'd say. But then to count that, I don't know if you call it a prophecy. See your um, point for the, you said she was a pupil of the book and she said, yeah, yeah. obviously like, because the Madhika says, this is the way to prove a false prophet. I get that. And for us, in an Islamic point of view, like he says, the only book for us that is preserved is the Quran. We, we do believe there was books of the past given to prophets, but we do believe after a amount of time, those, those books, people start to add their fabrication to the book and rulers that have ruled over the land add, add, added their rules to the book. But with Islam, it will never happen. So we don't, I don't know the history of how long the book was till the Quran, like the gaps between it in those years. But all I do know was Allah, if, if, if it was his time to die, Allah had a specific like cutter for the Prophet. Allah planned his life in that specific part. And you're coming to your source that you went saying if that was the way for the Prophet to be martyred, because we know in Islam, a martyr has a much more reward than a normal death then that was the case for him. For, that, for a Jewish woman to say that, and let's say she was, she, uh, in her case, she's right, because she gave him poison, he died to him. But to them as a false prophet. But we can go back to what Warafa said, which was, uh, he wasn't a Muslim either. And he said, when, before um, Prophet Muhammad reached pro prophethood anyways, because he reached prophethood before, when he was a teen, Warafa said to him, you are the seal of the prophets. And what the people of my books said about you back then, it's the same thing that's gonna you're gonna experience the same thing and he even said i wish you, i will be alive for when your own people run you out because that's how happened to the prophet of the past and the prophet of the past he's talking about is musa which is the same book that that woman referred to as the book of musa so at the end of the day what it depends i'm not saying what she said was false or what would have said all of these things are true all these things are set in history like you said we have to go back to history if the prophet died that way we can't avoid that the prophet died that way it's, it's part of history but at the end of the day and that doesn't prove he's a false prophet because anything I could probably find your source that that, that statement proves the real prophet I haven't got it right now and I don't know I can claim I don't know as well 100% I don't know but I'll probably get it for you but 100% he he is the most like from he was only a prophet for 23 years 40 to 63 but his whole life proves that he was a prophet from like birth to 40 to, um, 23 40 to 63 so 23 years 23 years that's that's uh, his prophet 23 years yeah do you know how long the bible was written over? how long I don't, I'm just no, no, I don't know. I'm asking how you are. About 1400 years. Mm -hmm. yeah? So, this is what I'm trying to say. This, I can't get it. I don't get it. I'm trying to get it. You believe this is, and I, and I mean this as, please take it as respectfully yeah, as you can. That a, a revelation that was being given to Muhammad from this angel, yeah, that, con that contradicts completely the Bible and the gospel, mm -hmm. yeah. And you believe that that 23 years of that revelation, whatever that ringing in uh, Muhammad's ears or whatever was happening to him, Lord, you believe that that is from God and that supersedes the, the Bible. I, can't, I don't get it. From that one fallen angel. I don't get it. No. I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm, yeah, well, uh, we'll, well, yeah, we'll conclude anyway. Uh, sorry, but, um, no, no, just say you're... Sorry, I'll just... It's just, just when he said... Just respond to that point. The, the, the Hindu scriptures came before the the, the Bible, what right? Were the, 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 million the, the New Testament, right? So they can say, well, what you've come with completely contradicts what we come with. How can we believe in that? Ah, okay. Because you're, 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 you're saying, but that's what you're saying. No, but you're, you're saying you're saying the, the, yeah, the Quran contradicts the Bible. Saying, the Hindus are not saying that that is the final book, yeah, of uh, no. the Old Testament. You're asking no, me something. Continue, Let continue, me continue. Continue. They're Sorry. not saying that the Hindus are not saying that they're their nonsense is the final book of the Torah and the Injil. They're not saying that. You are. Is uh, um, do you understand the difference? Now, I'm trying to take, say to you is this: that 23 years of whatever Muhammad. I don't believe that Muhammad was lying. I don't believe that. I've told you that. Respectfully, I don't believe that. Yeah, I believe that he was totally and utterly deceived by wicked 
pow powerful supernatural deception from the from either Satan himself or very highly powered, you know, um, uh, highly um, fallen angel of high power, of high stature, who was fallen, who rebelled against God. Yeah, and he deceived uh, Muhammad to come up with a counterfeit religion, which successfully has worked because it has now enslaved 1.8 billion Muslims against the saving grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ who died for your sins. So he's, he's a couple okay. of them. Shri, Shri, come Yeah, just do a wrap up. Shri, and you can just want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can continue next, next week. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll I, I do love having the chat with you. You know, you're a nice person. Yeah, you're a really nice person. All right, we'll see you as well. I'll chat with you guys. Yeah, yeah go on, just, just do a quick little wrap up and with your final points anyway. No worries. Uh, well, what do we yeah, I'll just conclude. What, what yeah, wrap just, up? There's been a lot. Well, okay, so I, I, I'll, I'll say it. I'll, I'll give you to the last word anyway. So my my argument, extended from what he said, was that one scripture cannot get correct. The, the criteria for a prophethood cannot get corrupted because if it does, then the people have nothing to stand by. Because if you have uh, you know, scripture which tells you how who were prophets, how they were prophets, and whatnot. Once that gets corrupted, no one can decide how to identify someone as a prophet, and that's why we cited on the verse um, in Corinthians where it says, Even the devil compares an angel of light. So, therefore, it's telling us that because we believe that angels could still visit people and whatnot, but it's a warning to people that don't get confused because the devil can also disguise himself so even if it's something that seems righteous it may not be from God and that's why for example I pointed to Mormonism where let's just say he saw an angel and it told him to do all these things but you would even yourself agree that well, it couldn't have been from God so what was it he saw maybe it was a jinn maybe it was a jinn disguised as a good angel and then obviously I went into some of the texts where he was challenged by the, um, the Jewish woman for us, we would say that a uh, prophet could not be challenged, that the authority of a prophet could not be challenged in public place because we have, for example, um, like even the story of Moses or Elijah, where they went up against like false prophets and they were proven to be wrong. You know, they were given challenges. So therefore, if someone challenged someone and said, well, I don't believe your God is a true God, God would vindicate that person. That's what we see with Christ people mock Christ to say well let's see you save yourself from the cross his vindication was the resurrection and obviously in what we believe that God saved him from death even though we do that going into a long winded up yeah. he's being <laughs> God but that was the vindication of him being who he was um, and also in the terms of we didn't get a, a good criteria of how we knew this angel was Gabriel so we will say well there wasn't a proper criteria and that's what we're trying to ask you did the angel introduce himself no so it's for us it would be then our argument would be it would be quite circular because the reason why I brought Christians and the Jew women is that we're trying to rely on previous traditions not even our own scripture to say for a criteria so let's go before and say what was established beforehand because that something beforehand has to be established for then it to be assessed so on that basis is what we would reject Muhammad and on my final point I would say that and what he was alluding to in terms of the 1400 years of tradition mm -hmm. even though Jewish people don't or modern day Jews don't <laughs> agree with Christians you still have more Jewish people that convert to Christianity than Islam and the question would be why would that be because we're, we're both if we're both accused of corrupting our books then the Christians corrupt their books a Jew would have no reason to believe in Christianity because that's corrupt too mm -hmm. but we argue both from the same scripture and we don't say there's corruption so Christians go into the Old Testament and affirm the same verses but then Jewish people somehow seem to accept what we say and believe in the Trinity rather than saying well the logical reasoning would be one God one God because even though Muslims try to appeal to Jews and say, well, they only believe in one God. The question would be, why would they then convert more to Christianity than Islam? So, that's a very good um, point. On that note, that's my conclusion. Thank and you, can, um, I don't know if this is true. Sorry, I don't know if this is true. Was, I've heard this a few times and I've seen it on YouTube, and this guy just reminded me when he talked to me about something. Was Muhammad bewitched for a certain amount of time? That, I don't know of. So I can't really tell you the full details. Maybe you know someone of. there could tell you. You know of. 
No. Was he? Was he? Was he bewitched for a certain amount of time? Oh yeah. So you know what? And honestly, you're, we're having an honest conversation. Was he? Yeah, do you want to just give we, it we a we can go open up yeah. a new subject or are we going to... No, 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 I just let them conclude and then... No, 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 yeah, no, no, yeah, no, yeah fine, just do your final one. Alright, listen, go... You, no, 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 I'll go after you, don't worry, do half and half. Um, you know, last point, so for your last point, you know, the, the ju more Jews goes to Christian, in our eyes, it's easier to focus. And you said even like, even though the Muslims say the Christians books are corrupted and the Jews, we claim that the Jewish books are corrupted too. In our eyes, it's easier to go from corruption to corruption because you're merely upon the same thing. But at the end of the day, Islam is free from all of this because Islam is, is separated from all of these regardless because we believe in one thing and the one thing we believe in is the truth. And even for the Jewish lady, for you to say that she's correct from what she said from her book, but at the same time, we have to ask, is the Jewish lady correct or is Wadaka correct? Because both of them are upon the same book and one of them is talking about he is a prophet and one of them is talking about I proved he's not a prophet. And one of them is a rabbi, one of them is just a lady. So even regardless of the status of whatever they are in the community, the question is which one is more true? And we can talk about um, what was one of the other points you made after the main point in your summary? Uh, angel. Oh yeah, angel. so Angel. Yeah. We talk about uh, Angel Gabriel or Jibreel never introduced, introduced himself to the prophet but we're specifically talking about the points after the before the revelation of the cave and when he's the child. But Angel Jibreel gave um, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam revelations throughout his life after that too. And even in those points, he, he specifically said, I am Jibreel, I am an angel of Allah. He actually introduced himself. And so him him introducing himself in those points, whether he did it in the first revelation or whether he did it in the tenth revelation, literally proves all the points now because if Angel, if, if Jibreel is telling Muhammad, I am Angel Jibreel, I'm the one that's been given revelation to you from the start, we know it wasn't saying because Jibreel is telling himself like it was me that did it and don't be before from my contentious I don't think there is any recording. Oh you do you oh you went to prove a recording Jibreel saying to oh give us it. Yeah, okay. was, yeah well if you continue I'll get that out. Gabriel with a hadith when the man came in the masjid and it was Gabriel when he said and he asked the questions about the religion oh, yes. and, he, and then the yeah, said, that was Gabriel who came to teach me religion. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to find another one. No but did, did Muhammad say that or the angel said that? That's my question. Did the angel introduce himself as Gabriel? The one you literally said came up here in front of the companions at that stage. Yeah what was that? Do you mean to the Prophet Muhammad? So I no I'm just saying did no, and he, did he did the, the this angel say I am Gabriel? That's all I'm asking. Rather than someone saying that is Gabriel. Yeah, you want Gabriel to literally himself say yeah? I'm gonna try and get that for you, cool. Because in that one, the one he's the one he's talking about, the prophets told the companions. Indeed, that was Gabriel. But you want yeah. Gabriel? Okay, cool. Because that's I'll, how I'll I said. That. Right yeah, I get it. I get it. I, get it. I can't I believe he's he until he tells me. Yeah, he's I get what you're saying. Yeah, he's just doing the wrap up, he's fine. But that's fine, we can continue next time because yeah, if, yeah, if we can't if find case, now, or we can right. continue the conversation. But yeah, you, you just summarise you, your own. You on and off. Yeah, I, I came last week, week but week. yeah. Cool. And any final words or on that note, we can, um, yeah. So on a note, we will conclude this conversation. It's been a very pleasant conversation. Um, yeah, so best we'll, uh, I had today, man, honestly. <laughs> we'll continue this um, the next time. And on a note, peace out. And just to reiterate what I said, essentially, I think, you know, when you're looking at um, the whole Christian, Jewish, Islamic narrative, uh, you have to ask yourself, if God did send a revelation, would God preserve that revelation? Because if he did, it means therefore you're always going to have a standard to um, validate, for example, if someone claims to be a prophet. Once that is eliminated, then anyone can claim to be anything and no one can have the ability to decipher whether someone is of God or isn't. So therefore, it's an it's a essential criteria that God preserves his scripture. And this is why we will say the Bible has always been um, preserved 
because there always needs to be a criteria in which to assess the criteria of prophethood. And that's why we can see people like Joseph Smith who claim to see an angel of light. Many people have um, claimed to see revelation, but we didn't get a chance to see the hadith. I'm not sure if I'm, I don't think there is any hadith where a, even angel, the angel, suppose angel, introduced himself as Gabriel. So we would have to question how did Muhammad or Warika know um, that's what he saw. And we can see in the scripture that it says even the devil can appear as an angel of light. So if that was the case, then we can see that clearly 1.8 billion Muslims have been deceived and they should really ponder the question of how did Muhammad really know what he saw was an angel. And on a note, you know, come to Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and Saviour. There is no other. And peace out to the Soko family. Oh, take the knife! <laughs>